Hi, I'm Andrew Conway and welcome to IPA Update. The Australian Government has recently announced that as of 1 July 2014, the tax deductibility for work-related self-education expenses is to be subjected to an annual cap of $2,000 per person. We believe that the proposed reform is short-sighted because it overlooks the ongoing need for continuous professional education and training. We have taken a very strong direct leadership position uh, on this important topic in, in opposing this reform. We're very concerned that this move will place a handbrake on individuals enhancing their own skill base. This will have a massive economic implication. The ability to include self-education as a deduction is critical to maintaining Australia's international competitiveness. To do otherwise, in our view, would be to accept mediocrity. We should be striving for excellence as opposed to a short-term tax grab and upgrading one's skills, especially in the accounting profession, where we know the need to develop and maintain currency is paramount and is amongst the highest expectations of all professions. There is also a need for some of our members to undertake self-education to actually meet the government's own uh, education and eligibility requirements for things like the new AFSL limited licence regime for accountants or the commercial law requirements for the Tax Practitioners Board. Another concern is whether conference expenses will be included as part of self-education and therefore be subject to the $2,000 cap. The current law allows for conference expenses to be deducted under the general deductibility rules rather than the proposed self-education regime which already excludes the first $250 of expenditure. This proposal will detrimentally impact on many professions, not just in ours, and it's an important matter that all professions are banding together on. The IPA will be making a direct submission to Treasury to voice our very strong concerns and opposition to this on behalf of all members and importantly, the broader Australian community. In 2012, the Institute of Public Accountants introduced I Love Small Business Day with a very special event in Canberra, providing all federal parliamentarians with a large wish list of items for the parliament to consider uh, to ease the regulatory and compliance burden on Australia's small businesses. This year, the IPA has actually extended the love theme throughout June. And the hope is that uh, all Australians will join us in acknowledging and celebrating the contribution that many of our small businesses make to the economic fabric, the employment fabric, and importantly, the social contribution small businesses make to our country. The importance of small business in Australia simply cannot be underestimated or overlooked, with some 2.7 million small businesses in Australia representing 96% of all businesses and providing 47% of private sector employment. The contribution of our small business sector is quite staggering. And the IPA is compiling the 2013 wish list as we continue to advocate for the needs of small business, particularly in the areas of a fairer and simpler taxation regime and the overwhelming need to reduce the regulatory burden of small business, to reclaim the kitchen tables of small business owners and operators. Just think if small businesses were unshackled from today's compliance burdens, how much more time and energy they could put into growing their businesses and to making an even greater contribution to the Australian community. This year, in addition to the official day of June 30 as the National I Love Small Business Day, we will be holding the IPAs and indeed the country's first national small business dialogue to be held in Canberra on the 26th of June. This day and this dialogue will bring together key industry leaders and small business owners and operators to discuss and develop plans and an agenda for reform and deregulation in the small business sector. To monitor the outcomes of the dialogue, or for more information on the IPA's I Love Small Business activities and the day and campaign itself, and for your free poster, please visit publicaccountants.org.au forward slash I Love Small Biz. The IPA has been advised that the International Auditing and Assurance Standards Board, the IAASB, is revising Audit Standard ISA 701, which deals with modifications in the auditor's opinion. The international standards, as we know, are taken by our own Australian Auditing and Assurance Standards Board, the 
AUASB. The AUASB amends the standards and considers the extent to which it's required for compliance with Australian law and regulations. And the best way you can monitor uh, these developments is to stay tuned to the IPA, uh, the IPA website at publicaccountants.org.au and, and regularly visit the AUASB website, which is auasb.gov.au. And that's all for this month, a month where we celebrate small business and aim to shop to show our love for small businesses around Australia. Don't forget to subscribe to the IPA's YouTube channel by clicking uh, on this subscribe button to keep up to date with all of the IPA's productions. And importantly, please visit our website, publicaccountants.org.au, our digital hub at pubact.org.au, or chat to us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter at IPA Accountants. Remember to encourage your clients to download and display the I Love Small Biz posters and stickers in their place of business. I'm Andrew Conway, we'll see you next month.